Welcome back, Range fans, to another episode of The Collector's Corner. Welcome, Range fans. Mr. Revolver Guy here with DayAtTheRange.com. Brought to you specifically by Ronnie Sands, who asked for a little bit more information on this Smith & Wesson 625 45 Colt. So before we go any further, we've got to do the customary safety check, right? Customary safety check for a revolver is pretty simple. Swing open the cylinder. You do the check to make sure that there is uh, nothing in the cylinder. As you can see there, there's nothing there, nothing down the pipe, of course. Now that we know this 625 is safe to talk about. So we're going to take the 625 like we normally do here in the collector's corner and uh, let's get started. We're going to start from top to bottom. First and foremost, what makes this Smith & Wesson 625 special? This Smith & Wesson 625 left the Smith & Wesson factory, the Performance Center, uh, in January 1999. I have quite a bit of information that's been documented, be, documented for me by the Smith & Wesson Historian Society. So old man Jinx himself, such a great person he is, has documented when this left the factory, how many were actually made. So before we get on to the characteristics of this Smith & Wesson 625, let's talk about its history a little bit. The history of this Smith & Wesson 625 is one thereof. In this particular run, there is about 210 of them, or not about, there is exactly 210 of them that were made in 1999 for RSR uh, distributors. This Smith & Wesson 625-7 happens to be below serial number of 100. It is actually below serial number of 50. This Smith & Wesson 625, starting with the characteristics and getting done with the tabletop review today. The Smith & Wesson 625-7 has an integral scope base, as you can see, integrated into the barrel here. You can see there it is integrated into the barrel. It also comes with from the factory, it's been magnaported. That's right, folks. It's been magnaported from the bar from the factory, and you can see there, it is also a slab sided barrel. Wow, look at that crown. That is pretty nice. No wonder the thing is so accurate. But anyways, getting back to the characteristics of the 625, it does come with a notch or windage adjustable front sight that has a red ramp on it as well. Red ramp stands out pretty uniquely. You move back to the rear of the Smith & Wesson, this being an in-frame, you can see there it has an adjustable micrometer rear sight that's adjustable for ev elevation and also windage. Man, I can't talk today, guys. Uh, Ronnie, sorry if I'm screwing this video up for you, but I hope this is getting you the information you need. The Smith & Wesson also comes with, look how wide that target hammer is, folks. That is one beautiful wide chrome flash target hammer. And to go along with that target hammer, you have a beautiful chrome flash trigger. And it has the trigger stop in it, as you can see as well. It also came from the factory with these whole grips. These are not replacements, actually came from the factory this way. So there you have it. Those are the characteristics of the Smith & Wesson 625-7. For those of us that are Smith & Wesson collectors, you know that the fourth edition manual is out there today and you can uh, look in that fourth edition manual. I'm pretty fond of this one. Uh, one, because of the price that I got it at. And then two, because even in the fourth edition of the manual, it doesn't really state how many were made. And it is very, very rare that there's not much information out there about it. But if you look at the letter provided by Jinx, in this 
particular series, there was only 210 of these made and I have one of the 210. So Ronnie Sands, there you have it. I hope this provided you with enough information on the Smith & Wesson 625-7. They are rare, so you said you're looking for one. You're probably gonna be hard pressed to find one. Anyways, folks, that's the characteristics of the Smith & Wesson 625-7. If you wanna see accuracy tests, go over to dayattherange.com. I'll include a link up above to the website where I've done accuracy tests out of the old 45 Colt. This was also included in a previous video. Is the 45 Colt really useful in this day and age? And I did some ballistics gel testing with this thing. And let me tell you, it's still very useful. So there you have it. I hope this gives you all the information that you're looking for, for your search. And I wish you the best of luck in finding one. Mr. Revolver Guy with dayattherange.com, signing out.